Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and compare the M2 MacBook Air against the M2 MacBook Pro and see which specific model is the better deal for you. Now, I will definitely tell you, I think for a majority of people out there, getting something like the M2 MacBook Air is the better option. I think it really doesn't make too much sense to buy the M2 MacBook Pro. I think getting something like the 14-inch MacBook Pro is a way better deal. Not a better deal, but it's a better option. And I'd rather spend more money that way than only spending $100 and getting like a weirder type of MacBook. So so that's kind of the best way to describe it. Personally, I bought an M2 MacBook Pro, but there weren't really too many videos I could do with it. There wasn't really too much hype about that specific MacBook. But with the M2 MacBook Air, this is a great chance to kind of compare two of the newest models that are probably going to be here for the next few years, to be completely honest. Now, I will tell you, there really isn't a bad choice here. Whether you get the M2 MacBook Air or the M2 MacBook Pro, these are great solid MacBooks that are going to last you for many, many years to come. Realistically speaking, if you buy either one of these MacBooks, Books, they're going to last for many years. You can probably buy these things for you and use them for like the next 10 years and still feel like you have a very solid machine. So looking at the future of both these MacBooks, there's really not a bad choice here, but I do think for the average person or even beyond the average person, if you're watching this, getting the M2 MacBook Air is probably the better option. I will be completely honest, but there still are a few advantages for the M2 MacBook Pro that we can discuss throughout this video. Now, first of all, if you want to pick up either one of these things, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of both these MacBooks, first of all with the price tag, the M2 MacBook Air is starting off at $1199 where the M2 MacBook Pro is selling for $1299. So the $1299 MacBook Pro is more expensive than the $1199 MacBook Air, but realistically speaking I think the MacBook Air did a lot more to differentiate itself from its previous generation than the M2 MacBook Pro. Now one thing I also want to state coloring wise on the outside of both, the M2 MacBook Air has more color options you can choose from. From. The M2 MacBook Pro, you can only choose between space gray and like another like silver model. With the MacBook Air, you can choose the midnight color, which looks beautiful, the starlight color, which looks beautiful, and the same two space gray and silver colors that you can get on the M2 MacBook Pro as well. So personally, I do think with the silver and the space gray models of the MacBook Pro, they look great, but I think the MacBook Air did a little bit better here in terms of that as well. Now, the same kind of top for the most part, but I will say for the bodies, it's kind of the same thing, but a little different. I mean, with the MacBook Pro, it looks exactly the same thing as the previous generation since 2016. With the new MacBook Air, this looks almost identical to the MacBook Pro 14 inch. So realistically speaking, the design is kind of the same, but with the MacBook Air, you're getting that thin, you know, side profile, which is very, very thin, but you're also getting an extra MagSafe port on the MacBook Air as well. On the MacBook Pro, you are not getting that MagSafe port. You are just getting two USB-C ports, which are great and everything, but it's weird that a cheaper MacBook Air has, technically speaking, more ports than the MacBook Pro. So even from that specific standpoint, you're getting a newer updated body from the outside, but you're also getting a MagSafe charger as well. Now, personally, I don't even use the MagSafe charger even on my 14-inch MacBook Pro, but it's still really cool to have that, you know, ability that if you want hey, you can use it on something like this. And I do think that's kind of important for this type of MacBook. Now, on top of that, flipping these things open, that is another big difference between these two. So with the MacBook Pro, the 13-inch one, you had a 13.3-inch Retina display. And as I've mentioned before, I think this is a pretty good bezel and pretty good panel. I mean, it's not really like a bezel list by any means, but it's a pretty good panel. I didn't really have too much to complain about it. You have True Tone. It doesn't have ProMotion, but it's still a pretty good panel. Whereas on the 13 point, whereas on the MacBook Air, we now have a completely different type of design for these panels. So it matches in line with the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's a 13.6 inch liquid retina display. So it is technically a bigger display than the MacBook MacBook Pro that you're comparing it to. And I do also think it's like around the same body size as well, so it's not like a crazy big difference between the two. And with that, you're getting a notch on the M2 MacBook Air. I will tell you though, with that design, that is just how the more premium designs are now with the notches. Apple at some point is going to remove that notch, but it's still a newer design. And I do think I would rather have a bigger display like on the M2 MacBook Air than the MacBook Pro 13 inch one. But I will be honest, I kind of do think that the M2 MacBook Pro panel still looks great. I don't really think there's like a crazy big difference in terms of the way the panels will look, but I do think that, I don't know what it is, maybe with like the M2 MacBook Pro, the brightness levels look a little bit better, and I do think with that panel, it looks just like a little bit sharper. I'm not 100% too sure why, but the M2 MacBook Air, you know, it's still design-wise, is a better design than the M2 MacBook Pro as well. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up in the, you know, body segment and everything like that, keyboards and everything, the trackpad 
are roughly around the same thing as well, although the M2 MacBook Air, I kind of like the design of that specific keyboard as well. You can get these things in the same storage variants as well, so 256 for the base models, but they go up to 2 terabytes. You can also pretty much, like I said, do the exact same thing between both of them as well. Funny enough, the M2 MacBook Air does have a technically higher resolution panel than the you know MacBook Pro, but they're very similar. They're almost exactly the same thing. In terms of height and width, you know, the MacBook Air is probably going to be a little bit slimmer. It also weighs a little bit less than the you know M2 MacBook Pro as well. But another big thing to keep in mind is that with that front-facing camera, you are getting a 1080p front-facing camera on the M2 MacBook Air, where the M2 MacBook Pro is 720p. Now, personally, I don't even think that's that big of a deal, but just the fact that you're saving money and you're getting a better camera on that thing just screams to me that that is just another you know situation where that MacBook is a way better system. I mean, it's not even fair. Why does the MacBook Pro not have that same type of capability? It makes absolutely no sense to me, and that's just another case where the MacBook Air pretty much just takes the cake. In my now, in terms of the performance side, this is realistically speaking another big W for the MacBook Air. So they had the exact same thing going between them, almost exactly the same thing. So here's the main difference with the base models of the M2 chipset between both. They are carried and you know tailored a little bit differently. So with the M2 MacBook Pro, we can get an eight core CPU of that specific you know MacBook Pro, but we can also get a ten core GPU. So that comes pre you know built with all those MacBooks. So whether you get the base model MacBook Pro or that top tier MacBook Pro, and that is obviously going to be pretty much the exact same thing. However, with the MacBook Air at that $1199 price tag, it is a little bit of a different story. You're getting that same 8-core CPU, but it doesn't have a 10-core GPU like the M2 MacBook Pro. We're getting an 8-core GPU on that M2 MacBook Air. So that is for that base model. However, it does go up to 10 cores, but you do need to spend $1499 on that specific 10-core GPU option. Now, is that a big deal? Personally, I really don't even think it's that big deal at all. And if you're somebody who's like a student, and you're taking notes on this MacBook or you're trying to go ahead and do some light video editing or even super heavy intensive video editing and you're trying to do you know max out this MacBook like crazy you're realistically not going to be having that crazy bad of a you know speed difference or anything like that on this specific MacBook it's still going to be able to handle everything you throw at it and honestly if you get this MacBook and you feel like it can't handle everything you want to you know basically do with it but most probably the other MacBook Pro the M2 model wouldn't have been able to handle it either so it's really kind of similar between the both I will say the MacBook Pro this is where it kind of starts starts showcasing that this one may be a better model just in terms of the you know performance to dollar ratio even though for the base models of both of these they look like they're like the m2 macbook air is the better one it pretty much is in almost every single area but when you're comparing it for the same amount of specs between them the m2 macbook air kind of starts looking like a different type of machine in this point also i want to state you are getting a, a fan built into the macbook pro with the m2 macbook air we do not have a fan in that inside of that specific model again is that a big deal personally i don't really think it's that big of a deal i mean, I mean, it's like whatever personally also i don't really like having fans kicking up all the time luckily for us the m chipsets they don't really kick up the fans too much but even on my 14 inch macbook pro whenever i'm not even doing anything crazy i still hear the fans i don't know if it's like a bug or something but still it's a cool thing to have and it helps you know kind of monitor your thermal situation on your macbook and it kind of cools your system down so it's nice having a fan but even if you don't have it the m chipsets like i mentioned kind of handle their performance to power ratio pretty well so to kind of sum up this comparison, I will be completely honest, I think the M2 MacBook Air still is probably the better MacBook for almost every single person watching this video. If you're somebody who wants to max out their amount of machine they can get and you like having fans inside of your MacBook, then maybe the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the you know M2 model is worth it. But even then, it just doesn't really make too much sense, mostly because the M2 MacBook Air can pretty much do everything you want. So when it comes down to it, I would probably recommend the M2 MacBook Air for a majority of people out there but I still like the M2 MacBook Pro and I still think it has a place in Apple's whole entire lineup just because you do have the ability of you know having that fan having a little bit of a higher performing machine if you need it and also it's a little bit of a different design it's supposed to be like the Pro model and it's not supposed to be like a air replacement or an option for air users I think it's supposed to be a cheaper 14 inch MacBook Pro for a lot of people so that kind of covers it up if you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that me so much but definitely hit that subscribe button more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.